Hello, and welcome to Globe Songs. I'm Carla Seidel. Today we're going to be talking about a Georgian folk song called Tua Se Turpa Ika Vi, sometimes also known as Satur Pialo. When I say Georgian, I mean not the U.S. state, of course, but the country in the South Caucasus region, nestled between Russia, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Turkey, and the Black Sea. This is a clip of a recording I made of that song four years ago, which you can find on my personal YouTube channel, Carla Seidel. I first visited Georgia in 2007 while serving as a Peace Corps volunteer in Azerbaijan. And the first thing that stood out to me was the language. I wasn't used to being in a country where I understood none of the language and could make out none of the written language either. I remember trying to buy a couple of pastries at a bakery and really fumbling, trying to remember some of my limited Russian to say the number of pastries that I wanted and please and thank you. Russian's not being taught nowadays in school in Georgia, but since Georgia had been part of the USSR, the older folks were able to speak Russian. The Georgian writing system was amazing to see on street and business signs. I just learned from Wikipedia that there are actually three Georgian writing systems and the Georgian alphabet I was seeing is called Mkhedruli. The origin of the Georgian script, says Wikipedia, is poorly known, and no full agreement exists among Georgian and foreign scholars as to its date of creation, who designed the script, and the main influences on that process. Wow, there's a mystery. The modern Georgian alphabet has 33 letters, and here, for instance, are the Georgian lyrics to our song. While I was in Georgia, I saw some beautiful old churches and was introduced to some amazing cuisine, including wonderful breads, a boat-shaped egg pizza called kachapuri, and tasty handmade Hingali dumplings. I first got a hint that Georgian music was amazing when I picked up a CD of Georgian folk music that was labeled Club Version. I'm so glad I still have it. Here's a taste. <laughs> songs on that 2004 album were representative of a new genre, folkotek, an experiment by the Georgian National Ballet Sukishvili that apparently sparked Georgian youngsters to try out Georgian folk dance moves in Georgian discos. While I don't know Georgian folk dance, I have loved dancing to some of these songs, and I think this was also the first context in which I heard Georgian choral singing the style known as Georgian traditional polyphony, which was listed as one of the masterpieces of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity in 2001. Our friend Wikipedia writes, Georgian folk music is predominantly vocal and is widely known for its rich traditions of vocal polyphony. It is widely accepted in contemporary musicology that polyphony in Georgian music predates the introduction of Christianity in Georgia, beginning of the 4th century AD. 
Both East and West Georgian polyphony is based on wide use of sharp dissonant harmonies, seconds, fourths, sevenths, ninths. Because of the wide use of the specific chord consisting of the fourth and a second on top of the fourth, CFG, the founder of Georgian ethnomusicology, Dmitri Arakishvili, called this chord the Georgian Triad. Years later, in Asheville, North Carolina, I got the chance to sing Georgian harmonies with a local choir, the Wild Asheville Community Chorus, led by Susanna Park. After every season, Susanna would have us celebrate with a traditional celebratory Georgian feast called a supra, which was interspersed with many toasts. Besides the heartfelt words and camaraderie, what stood out about these adapted stateside supras was the relative gender equality. In the traditional Georgian supras, I hear, it's the men who do the toasting and the eating mostly, and the women who are behind the scenes, cooking and serving and cleaning. I definitely experienced this gender divide during my two plus years in neighboring Azerbaijan, where the gender divide was the greatest cultural difference I experienced during my time there. I actually returned to Azerbaijan and to Georgia somewhat recently in 2019 with my young daughter. Arriving at our Airbnb in Tbilisi and then hungry, wandering outside to find food, we entered a local restaurant and while we enjoyed the food, it was off-putting to realize that the only other patrons in the restaurant were men. I got the impression that, like in Azerbaijan, a woman's place in Georgia might be the home. UN Women, the United Nations organization dedicated to gender equality and the empowerment of women, writes of the situation in Georgia, gender perceptions in Georgia place men in a dominant position in many areas of social, economic, and political life. Data confirms persistent inequalities between women and men. There is a significant gender gap in labor force participation, with the gender wage gap reaching 35%. Women's entrepreneurship is limited. Female-headed households marginalize social groups among the internally displaced and conflict-affected populations, and women from other excluded groups often experience poverty or are at a high risk. Women's political participation is low, with women only constituting 11% of parliamentarians in the national and local governments. Violence against women and girls in Georgia is also a recognized public concern. But I digress. Let's rewind to 2009. I was living in Istanbul for a few months when I discovered today's Globe Song in the lovely but bleak Turkish film Son Bahar, which is translated to Autumn in English. There are three languages spoken in that film, Turkish, Georgian, and Hamshetsi Arme Armenian. In the film credits, the song is listed as Satur Pialo, and it really grabbed me. I looked it up and found some versions of it on YouTube which mostly were going by the name Tuase Turpa Ikavi. I also found a Turkish translation, which I then roughly translated into English. Since you were so lovely, why did I stay away? Why did I not open my heart to such a love? Was there another way of loving you? You who woke me tenderly, whispered sweet words, and took me in your arms. Now this meaning resonated with me, and I began to play the song quite a bit. I've often found a special freedom singing songs in other languages. Somehow I find it easier to be expressive with my voice, and I'm guessing part of that is because, since I'm presuming my audience won't understand the meaning of the words, the meaning can be kind of my special secret. Going back now and researching more about today's song, a few YouTube sources credit this song to Hamlet Gonashvili, who I learned is sometimes referred to as the voice of Georgia. But the rest just list this song as a traditional Georgian folk song. So I'm assuming that Gonashvili, who died in 1985, 
was the first to make a popular recording of this song. In 2016, the Georgian choral group Ensemble Bassiani actually performed this song at the Cranert Center in Illinois. And in their program, they translate the title as You Were So Pretty, and they describe it as a lyric love song that is accompanied by the panduri, a traditional Georgian three-stringed plucked instrument. The lyric love genre of folk songs, they write, convey human spiritual experiences with extraordinary candidness and immediacy. Here's their translation, no doubt more accurate than mine. Why couldn't I notice that you were so pretty, little violet? Because your heart is closed for love. Now I met a new gardener who filled me with cares and love. He talked to me sweet and sat me in his lap. To be honest, I like my translation a lot better. But part of the challenge of song translation from other languages is choosing, should I stick more to the literal, more accurate meaning of the words, or should I be influenced more by the feelings that I think are trying to be conveyed in the original, and awareness of how the literal translation might sit in a new cultural context. I've gotten used to pronouncing the lyrics to this song the way I learned them in 2009. But of course, I don't speak Georgian, so I'm only doing my best. Maybe one of you watching is a native Georgian speaker and can tell me the difference between ah la sva me bare na he, which is what I learned years ago, and ah la sva me bare shem fda, which it seems that many other singers use and it seems, at least on Google Translate, means now I met another gardener. There are plenty of YouTube versions you can find of this song. One, of, one notable one is a formal performance by the men's ensemble Rustavi. And uh, another one that's notable is by Georgian-British singer-songwriter Katie Melua. But the one I think I've found that I like best is a laid-back rehearsal of the Iberi Choir, a group of five men, one soloist, and one of the singers strumming the panduri. I'll put the links to all these in the description. In a lot of the versions I've found, it seems the soloist sings the verse, and then that's repeated by a backing chorus in harmony. Hopefully one day, post-COVID, we can sing in close quarters with others again. Meanwhile, I'm going to try to sing the song for you now. Tua se turpa ikavi, or in my translation, Since You Were So Lovely. Thanks for joining me for this second episode of Globe Songs. If you have any feedback or suggestions, please let me know. And feel free to subscribe to the Globe Songs channel if you'd like to be notified of future episodes. I'm really glad to have you with me as we discover the world and its cultures, one folk song at a time. Tu as tu pai